This Dwayne at RealFixesRealFast.com. Today we've got a 97 Blazer. The problem is the heater blower isn't working all the time. The driver says sometimes it works fine, sometimes it doesn't. Now you may find that when they bring it to you, it's not working. It's a little easier to test. But what do you do when they bring it to you with that complaint and it's working? Then you need to test it even though it's working and see if it's the bad blower motor or what. We're going to show you how to do that now. Now the blower motor is actually underneath this cover. It's out under the hood on this one. As you can see, we've got this plastic cover over everything. Now on these blazers and some of the pickup trucks and so forth, it'll have this kind of a setup. Now another thing here, we've got to test this thing. And if you notice, it's all kind of hard to get to. It's, you can actually get in there and unplug this, but it's hard to get your instruments in there to test that. Oftentimes, you know, if you have a motor that's not working, you can bang on it like a fuel pump or a starter and it'll start working. Now it's real easy sometimes to say, well, that's the motor's probably bad. Well, we don't like to deal with probabilities. You know, maybe it's bad, maybe it's not. And in this case, we can do the same thing. If it comes in and it's not working, you can bang on it. If it starts working, it's probably bad. But probably is really not a good way to charge people a lot of money to fix a part. We need to know that it really is bad. So we're going to test it. Now we're going to use the current probe to test this because you know on a current probe we can actually see the waveform and see what the pattern looks like. But if, to use a current probe you can see that it's kind of hard to get that in there. There's not, not a lot of room. So if you run into that on this situation or any, here's a way to get around that. Now around here we always keep wires from things and sometimes you'll find the exact wires or you can simply make these up. You just need two wires with the right ends on them and then we're just going to put this in line so we can put our probe around this. Now we we'll just come in here and pop this out of here. Now I'm going to put some wires in here on those terminals. Now you see we're just going to put terminals on there and then we can bring them out this far. Now we just bring this up here and we plug these in. Now we've got plenty of wire to put our current probe around. Now when you hook up your current probe always take it off of the wire turn it on and then zero it. And if you look at your lab scope you can see it when you zero it. That's going to give you a true reading now based on zero. There's no current flowing through here. Now you put it around your wire. Now we're going to turn it on. Now this is the actual blower motor as it looks. Now that is a bad waveform, but just to illustrate this, we're set right now on 0 to 10 milliseconds. I want to change that, so go up, change, change your sweep, and from 10 I'm going to go to 20. Now that just gives me a longer look at it. That is a bad waveform. That a, indicates a bad motor. Now how do you know that that's a bad motor? How do you know that that's a bad waveform? Now for some of us who've been doing this for a while, we can recognize a good waveform against a bad waveform. You can tell when the pattern's good or bad. So like anything, you kind of have to build up your experience, build up your repertoire of knowing what's good and bad. So any of you new techs out there that are beginning to learn all this stuff, I'd advise you to use your lab scope often, even if a motor is good. If you got the time, hook it up so you can recognize a bad pattern when you see it, simply because you've seen so many good ones a bad one just jumps out at you. So in this case what we're actually going to do to illustrate that we we know we've got a bad waveform but I've got a brand new motor here so we're going to actually tap into this leave the settings just like they are so that you can see the difference between a good and a bad waveform. Now we're looking at the bad waveform. Now we're going to plug in the new motor. We're going to leave this plugged into the electrical connector and we're going to pull these out of the bad motor 
Now I'm simply going to plug these into the new motor. The motor runs, and if you look at the pattern on the lab scope, this is a good waveform pattern. We haven't changed anything. We're still on 0 to 20 milliseconds. Now if you want to see this a little bit better, on this scope you can simply drag this down, put it down where you can see it better. Now this is a good waveform, showing good contacts within the motor. It's a sine wave. Now, just compare, we're going to go back to the old motor. Take this off of here, and we'll plug it back in here. Now we plug back into the old motor. Look at the waveform. You can see how broken up and how uneven that is. That's a bad waveform. That motor is definitely bad. So we're going to replace this blower motor. <laughs>